In this video, we will look at a, a test to determine whether an integer is divisible by 9 or if it's divisible by 3. And the only thing that you'll need to know in order to understand this test or where this test comes from, so the proof of this test, is modular arithmetic. So if you've never seen modular arithmetic before, you could probably just look it up on Google before continuing with this video. It's not too hard to understand. But other than that, we should be fine to start. So suppose we have some integer which has a base 10 representation. So let x be the integer, and its base 10 representation, which is of course just the usual representation of a number that we're familiar with, but its base 10 representation is given by the following. So it's dk, dk minus 1, dk minus 2, and so on all the way down to d2, d1. And what are these d's here? They are the di's are just some numbers well, really, they're just digits, but we're taking them from this set. The set of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and all the way up to 9. So, in other words, this, this last part here with the di's, that's just saying that we have a base 10 representation. Okay, so let's just quickly see an example of something. So, I could choose, for example, x to be 459. That would be a perfectly reasonable base 10 representation of an integer. Of course, that's the integer that we're familiar with, 459. Okay, now since we're in base 10, since we are in base 10, our number x, our integer x, can actually be written as the following. Well, if you have a look, this is like the units or the ones column of our number or unit of our number. This is the 10 column. This is, if there was a number here, that would be the hundreds and then the thousandth and then so on. So really, our x is equal to d1 times 1, but 1 is really just 10 to the power 0 here. That's what it means. Plus d2 times 10 to the power 1, plus d3 times 10 to the power 2, and so on, all the way up to the last digit, which is dk, and times 10 to the power k minus 1. Alright, and let me call this star, because we're going to refer to that in a moment. So, we have this. Now, here's the key in order to make this proof work, this divisibility test work. So we need to note the following. Note that 10 is really identical to 1 if we're looking mod 9. So if we're working mod 9, 10 is identical to 1. And that means that any power of 10, so 10 to the n, should be equal to 1, mod 9, if of course n is some integer. So any power of 10 should also be 1, because it's really just, instead of, for example, 10 squared, that would be 10 times 10, but 10 is equal to 1. So it's 1 times 1, mod 9, which is, of course, 1. So that's something very key to note. And so now I can read my, my equation star. So reading star modulo 9 gives us the following. Let's move this up a little. Gives us that x is identical to, well, 10 to the power 0 is already 1. So that's d1 times 1. Let's just put the 1 in anyway. Now, as we said, 10 to the power 1, which is 10, is equivalent to 1, mod 9. So this is d2 times 1. And then we also said that any integer power of 10 was going to be equal to 1, mod 9. So I can continue this pattern, and I can say that all these powers of 10 here will just become 1 if I'm reading this modulo 9. And so I get up to dk times 1. Of course, it's good to note that we're reading this mod 9. And I'll just write this in a little nicer form now. Of course, multiplying everything by 1 is just the thing itself. So that becomes a plus d2, d3, and so on, all the way up to dk. OK, good. Now I'm going to suppose something. So we suppose that the sum of all my digits is an, is an integer multiple of 9. So suppose that d1 plus d2 
all the way up to dk. Suppose if I added all these digits up, I got something that was a multiple of 9. So let's say 9 times m, capital M, where m is some integer. All right. Now, what does that tell us? Well, if I'm reading, if I go, let's call this a double star here. Now, if I substitute this statement into double star, let's write double star down. This is D1, or maybe we should call the line underneath it double star. So let's call this here double star, because we've got rid of the ones. Okay, substituting our supposition, what we've assumed here, into double star gives us that, firstly, just quickly writing this back down, and noting that this is, of course, mod 9. So now I have that x is equal to 9m, mod 9. Ah, but we're looking mod 9, so 9 times m, well 9 is equivalent to 0, mod 9. So this is now 0, mod 9, because it's 0 times m. But what does that mean? If x is equivalent to 0, mod 9, that tells me that x is an integer multiple of 9. Integer multiple of 9. And what does it mean to be an integer multiple of 9? i.e. x is divisible by 9. Divisible by 9. So, if, now here's the key point, if this statement here, the one I've marked with the green star, if this is true, then x is an integer multiple of 9. Or in other words, x is divisible by 9. So here we have our first, well, our, not our first condition, but here we have our condition for a number, for an integer to be divisible by 9. So I can say, therefore, x is divisible by 9 if its digits, i.e. d1, d2, d3, all the way up to dk, if its digits add to a multiple of 9. And of course, when we say multiple, we mean integer multiple. Multiple of 9. Good, so let's see a few examples. What was the number we had up above? x equal to 459. So 459, let's call this x1. If we add up the digits, 4 plus 5 plus 9. 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 9 is 18. That's a multiple of 9. So this number is divisible by 9. So therefore, x1 is divisible by 9. Good. Let's try another example. x2 equals 4,710. Well, adding up the digits, 4 plus 7 plus 1 plus 0. That would be equal to 5 plus 7, so that's 12. Ah, but 12 is not a multiple of 9. So therefore we can say that x2 is not divisible by 9. And you might want to check that on a calculator for yourself for confirmation. What about x cubed, or x3 rather, equal to, uh, let's see, 411282. Okay, so let's add up these digits. 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 8 plus 2. That should be 4 plus 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8, plus another 8 is 16, plus 2 is 18. 18 is a multiple of 9, so therefore this is, is divisible by 9. In fact, I had worked this one out earlier. This is x3 is actually equal to 9 times 45,698. I believe that's correct but you can double check that for yourself. Okay, so that's the divisibility by nine. Now the divisibility by three is almost identical in proof. The only difference is that here we say that 10 is, is equivalent to one mod three, which of course is a true statement. And so again, 10 to the power of some integer would be equivalent to one mod three. And then our proof would follow along as, as we've had before. 
And the only thing that would be different would be that in our final statement, x is divisible not by 3, by 9. I would now say by 3 here and by 3 here. So x is divisible by 3 if its digits add to a multiple of 3. We could see a very easy example. Let's just use red again, I guess. So let's say now we have number x4 was equal to 72. So 7 plus 2 equals 9. So in fact, now we also know that this number is divisible by 9, of course, because 9 times 8 is 72. But we're just looking for divisibility by 3 here. So it's divisible by, or well, this number 9 is 3 times 3. So therefore, it's a multiple of 3. And so therefore, I can say x4 is divisible by 3. And of course, 72 is 3 times 24. So we can clearly see that it's divisible by 3. All right, so that is how we test if an integer is divisible by 9 or 3. We just add the digits of the integer and see if it's an integer multiple of 9 or 3 respectively.